Austin throws a party at his parents' house. The next morning, he finds out that someone had robbed him. The thief took all the money and jewelry from the safe locker. Austin video calls four of his best friends and says, Someone robbed my house yesterday. Do you have any suspects? Mary says, I'm sorry, but I can't believe it was one of the guests. Julie says, I spent all evening downstairs. I didn't even come close to your parents' safe. So I didn't notice anything suspicious. Bob says, No way. Every single guest at the party is pretty wealthy. Maybe it's the pizza guy. And Rick replies, but Mary showed up with a stranger looking like a criminal. I wouldn't be surprised to find out that he's the thief. Can you guess who's the robber? Julie. Austin didn't mention the safe. How did she know? This pen is only half filled with ink. How many words can it write? Pens cannot write even a single word. It's the person holding the pen who can write the words. One of these customers is not from Earth. Can you spot who? This guy is eating toothpicks. What about this company? Who's not from Earth? This person, who uses a laptop as a mug holder? Bobby, Stella, and Chris are having a roller skating contest in the park, but one of them is cheating. Can you guess who? Chris, take a closer look at his feet. His roller skates are not so simple. Wendy is selling flowers. One sunflower costs $24. The price of one narcissist is $9. Can you calculate the price of one calla lily? The price for one calla lily would be $1.50. Each flower costs $1.50 per petal. And a calla lily only has one petal. George and Nancy are having dinner in a fancy restaurant. Can you spot three weird things here? The violinist is using an arrow. There's a toad in these flowers. And this waiter serves a bitten apple. Emma, Ted, and Peter are having a speed swimming competition. Can you spot who's cheating? It's Ted. Take a look at his neck. He has a small chip. Therefore, he must be a robot, and he can't compete with humans. Andy and his wife Nancy go to sleep early tonight. In the middle of the night, weird noises from the basement wake Andy up. His wife is gone. Andy looks around the house, but Nancy doesn't answer. Andy goes down to the basement. Suddenly, a creepy clown pops out of nowhere and tries to grab Andy. But Andy just laughs and says, Stop fooling around. I know it's just a prank. How did he know? Take a look at the picture on the wall. Nancy and the clown are wearing identical sneakers. Bob visits this coffee shop every day because he's secretly in love with the local barista, Kelly. But today, he faced unpleasant news. Someone had replaced Kelly with her evil clone. How did Bob know? All Kelly's piercings and tattoos are gone and no marks are left on the skin. Billy downloads a dating app to find his love. He finds three ladies and likes them equally. Elle is a travel blogger, vegan, and a huge fan of rom-coms. Ashley is a school teacher. She loves hiking and writes her own novels. Bella is a scientist. She's very busy at work. That's why she never has had a serious relationship. She's fond of ice cream and sunrises. Unfortunately, only one of these three profiles isn't fake. Can you help Billy ask the right lady out? There's a wedding picture on Bella's desk. 
therefore, she's a liar. Elle says that she's a vegan, but she's eating a hot dog in this picture and a steak in this picture, so she's a liar too. So Billy should invite Ashley. Shelly runs an online shop. Although all her employees live in the same city, they only meet online. This morning, their Zoom call was interrupted by a stranger. Can you spot the imposter? It's this lady. All employees live in the same city, which means in the same time zone. But take a look out her window. It's a deep night. Dan is hiking in the woods during the last weekend of March every year, but this time he gets lost. Dan wanders around and finds this sign. He should choose one of the three routes to get out of the forest. The first route leads through a village of mutants. They hate people and no one has ever managed to escape from them. The second route is across a very old suspension bridge located under a river full of toads and worms. The third route leads through the habitat of a large family of bears. Which way is more or less safe? It's spring now, so the bears are awake and probably very hungry. Also, it will be difficult for Dan to deal with the mutants all alone, so Dan should take the second route. Even if he falls into the river, nothing bad will happen. Toads and worms don't bite. Rosie is baking a delicious chocolate cake in the kitchen. It's a gift for her boyfriend. When it's ready, she puts the cake in the fridge and goes upstairs to take a shower. In a while, Rosie returns to find out that someone had cut the cake and eaten a few pieces. Rosie questions three of her roommates. Samantha says, How dare you? I'm on a sugar-free diet. Pam says, I haven't been in the kitchen today. I'm too busy with my studies. And Harry says, I opened the fridge two minutes ago and the cake was full. Who ate the missing pieces? Nobody. The roommates pranked Rosie. The spoiled chocolate cake isn't Rosie's cake. Take a closer look. It has a different decoration. And her cake is still in the fridge, in this box on another shelf. Tom is having a job interview. The HR manager likes his resume and asks him one final question to check his logical thinking. These toothpicks indicate a group of fishes moving from west to east. Can you make them move in the opposite direction by moving just three toothpicks? Here's the solution. Victor is riding a bicycle in the park. Suddenly, someone throws a spray can of blue paint at his head. Victor loses balance and falls. He finds three suspects and interrogates them. Alex says, I was just sitting on the bench and reading a book. Barbie says, I was skating and didn't see any paint cans. And Ashley says, I was painting graffiti, but soon I noticed that someone had stolen my blue paint. Who threw the paint at Victor? Ashley has paint on her hands, and that's okay because she's making street art. Alex has stains on his t-shirt, but it's just a design. And why would Barbie have blue stains on her hands if she didn't see any paint? Anna is waiting for her boyfriend, Stan, in a restaurant. He shows up with a box of donuts and goes straight to Anna. Suddenly, he slips on the wet floor. What is Stan trying to say? The donuts say, marry me? Stan is proposing to Anna. Fred sits down at a barbershop. The hairdresser says, you must be a visitor here. I love to cut strangers. It's better to serve two strangers than one local. Fred asks why. Can you guess the hairdresser's reply? Serving two is always more profitable than one. I have hundreds of legs, but I can only lean. Make me feel dirty so you feel clean. What am I?
I'm a broom. The CIA arrives at Chris's house this morning. They suspect that he's a criminal. He sells stolen art to other criminals via Instagram, but Chris denies everything. Having searched the apartment, the agents find his phone. There are three suspicious people among his followers. Can you spot the criminal? It's this guy. His nickname literally says, Top Secret. That's it for today. So hey, if you pacified your curiosity, then give the video a like and share it with your friends. Or if you want more, just click on these videos and stay on the bright side. Anna went on vacation to Hawaii and stayed at a luxury hotel. The hotel manager told her that they had only three empty rooms left. Anna could choose the room she liked best. Can you help her make a wise choice? There's no mosquito net on the window in the second room, and something's wrong with the door handle in the third room. So, Anna should choose the first room. Anna went to the hotel swimming pool. She spotted three odd details in the area right away. Can you see them too? There's no ladder in the pool. There are two suns in the sky, and this guy is sunbathing in a winter coat. After lunch, Anna decided to go on a boat trip. At the pier, she met three sailors. Bob offered her a three-hour sailing and fishing trip for $10 only. Kyle offered Anna a personal diving class for $200. And Daniela offered to have a boat trip around the coastal cliffs for free. But only one of these offers is actually a good deal. Can you guess which one? Kyle's offer is overpriced. Look at the poster hanging at the pier. It advertises personal diving classes for $20. And Daniela's offer isn't safe. Her boat has a broken bottom. That's why Anna should accept Bob's offer. Anna woke up on a deserted island in the middle of a hot day. The sun was shining very bright, so she needed to find a water source as soon as possible. There's the sea nearby, but she can't drink salty water. She found an abandoned cabin that contained some really handy items. Two empty paint cans, one large and one small, a roll of aluminum foil, one baseball, an old pair of sneakers, and some other useful things. Which one of these additional items can Anna use to combine with the previous items to obtain drinking water? A book? A handful of tiny pebbles or a plastic bag? The book is useless in this context. The pebbles can be found all over the shore. As for the plastic bag, Anna can fill one half of the larger paint can with seawater. Then, put the smaller can inside of it. Next, she should use the laces from the sneakers to pull the plastic bag tight over the large can. And finally, place the baseball on top of the plastic bag directly above the smaller can to make a small indentation. Then, just leave this construction in the sun. Drinking water will evaporate and condense on the plastic bag. The indentation will push the water into the smaller paint can. Anna decided to explore the island. Soon, she found a tunnel and got lost inside it. At the bottom of the tunnel, Anna saw three pits leading to freedom. But, unfortunately, every pit is hiding some danger. A huge squid is hiding in the first pit. There's a hungry hyena in the second pit. And there's a poisonous porcupine hiding on the third path. Can you help Anna choose the safest way to escape? Anna should choose the pit with the squid. They can't live in conditions that differ from the marine habitat. Therefore, she should wait for a while. The squid will get weaker and she'll be able to escape safely. Anna got hungry and went to the jungle to find some food. But she's not alone here. Can you find any hidden animals in this picture?
there are six animals in the jungle. Here they are, a butterfly, an alligator, a rabbit, a camel, a snake, and a deer. Finally, Anna found three bushes with berries. They all look delicious, but only one of them is safe to eat. Can you help Anna make the right choice? She should take a look at the monkeys. They stay away from the first bush because it's a mutant plant. See? It has teeth and emanates toxic gases. Meanwhile, the monkeys enjoy berries from the second and third bushes. But a cobra is hiding under the third bush. So the second bush is the safest choice. Anna got sunburned during her walk. Which item from the cabin can she use to cool down? Aluminum foil? Fresh water from the paint can? or the sponge with some seawater. The sponge with salty water will only make it worse for Anna's irritated skin. And the drinking water is too precious to waste on bathing. Meanwhile, metallic foil is a great tool to cool down a shelter. Anna can cover the roof and the cabin walls and deflect some of the sun's heat. The next day, Anna continued her travel around the island and came across an abandoned village. She found a car with the keys still in it. The car was parked outside the local library. But before Anna could do something about it, a nearby volcano erupted. She didn't see any signs of glowing red lava, but a huge cloud of black smoke was moving towards her. It'll reach the place where Anna's standing in a minute. What should she do? 1. Head down to the library's basement, which is filled with vampire bats. 2. Take the stairs to the library's roof and hide there. Or, take the car and try to ride away. Volcanic dust is very hot and moves at high speed. Anna cannot either outrun the dust or hide from the clouds on the roof. So the safest option is to lock herself in the basement with creepy bat neighbors. In the basement, Anna noticed a big wall clock. It happened when the minute and hour hand was precisely between 1 and 2. She saw that both hands lay on top of each other. Can you guess what the time was? Twelve o'clock. Both minute and hour hands lay exactly between the number 1 and 2 in the middle of the number 12. Anna looked around and found a secret passage in the basement. She entered the passage and fell into a subterranean river, which carried her away to a large waterfall and then to a much bigger river surrounded by rocky cave walls. She tried to swim away, but the force of the waterfall had created a reverse current, pulling her backwards with an intense force. Anna needs to act fast. What would you suggest? Swim onward through the crashing water, swim to the side and try to climb the walls, or dive as deep as possible and then swim out of the waterfall's pull. Swimming onward isn't an option. The current will pull her back anyway. The chances of directly overcoming the forces of the water are zero. But if Anna goes downward as deep as possible where the water current is not so strong, she still has a good chance to escape. As soon as Anna got outside, she met a wicked witch. She offered Anna a deal. You need to run one of these three tunnels colored red, blue, and yellow. Two of them lead to a black hole, while another leads to your hotel room. Listen to my clues very carefully. Choose the reed and you won't disappear. It's a lie to say that blue isn't dissimilar. The yellow doesn't have less in common with the red than the blue. Can you help Anna make the right choice? The witch said that the red tunnel won't not make her disappear, which means that Anna will disappear. So we can exclude the red one, and the yellow doesn't have less in common with the red than the blue, which means that the yellow 
does have more in common with the red. So now we can exclude the yellow one as well. Anna should choose the blue tunnel. Several birds landed on trees. One bird for one tree. But in this case, one of them didn't have a tree of its own. Then they regrouped with two birds sitting on one tree. After this, one tree was left. How many birds and trees are there? There are four birds and three trees. Look at these four people in a grocery store. Can you figure out who's going to steal a watermelon? It's the man with a soccer ball. It seems as if he's holding something heavy. It must be the watermelon disguised as a soccer ball. You wake up and find yourself in a locked room without windows and only one door. You look around and notice a table. There's a piece of paper, a knife, and several inflated balloons lying on it. You pick up the note. It reads, To get out of here, you must puncture a balloon with a knife. But if the balloon bursts, you'll stay here forever. What should you do to make a hidden door open in one of the walls? You should deflate one of the balloons. After that, you can easily puncture it with a knife. You're walking along the beach and spot an expensive looking watch in the sand. There are only three other people on the beach. Who does the watch belong to? This guy's watch is in his pocket. The tan line on this girl's wrist doesn't match the shape of the watch. The watch must belong to this elderly lady. You've got a sack filled with coffee beans. You need to use this coffee to completely fill two other sacks of the same size. How do you do it? Put one empty sack into the other and fill them with coffee. Three young men came to a coffee shop to prepare for their final exam. A waiter came up to them and asked, Does everyone want coffee? The first guy said, I don't know. The second man answered, Nah, I don't know. And the third one answered, Yes. Can you figure out what the first two guys ordered? All young men ordered coffee. Each of them wanted to have this drink, but the first two couldn't know if it would be everyone's choice. If the first two guys hadn't wanted coffee, they'd have simply said no. So when the third guy heard his friend's replies, he figured out that both of them wanted coffee. And since he was going to get a cup, he said yes. You have to think outside the box to crack this one. 1 is to 3 as 3 is to 5, and 5 is to 4, and 4 is the magic number. Can you figure out the pattern? The word 1 has 3 letters, the word 3 has 5, and the word 5 has 4 letters. But the word 4 has 4 letters in it. And whatever number you try, eventually you'll come back to four, and the game will end there. Vincent got locked in a room with no windows and only one massive door. There's a panel with several buttons on the left and another one with a hint on it on the right. There's also a clock on the wall above the door. Which button should Vincent press to get out of the trap? The green triangle. The numbers on the panel represent hours. If you connect them on the clock face, you'll get a triangle. Add this number to the same one and multiply the result by 4. Then divide it by 8 and you'll have the very first number again. What number is it? It can be any number. You can try it out to make sure. 
Look at these women attentively. Which one seems to be suspicious? It's the one on the right. The woman on the left was just adding some ketchup to her dish. See that bottle? But look at the pie the woman on the right is holding. There's a smartphone peeking out of the pie. What's it doing there? It's very suspicious. The police knocked on Michael's door late in the evening. They had a search warrant. They accused the man of stealing a big sum of money from a supermarket. Mike claimed that he hadn't left the house all day, but one of the detectives saw something in his living room, and it led to the man's arrest. What was it? Look at the date on the receipt lying on the table. It's the same as the date on the calendar, which means Michael lied about not leaving his house that day. Look at these guys attentively. Can you tell which one has drawn the graffiti? It's the guy on the left. He has some spray paint on his hoodie. An ant is two inches away from its home. With every next step, it covers half the distance to the entrance. How many steps will the insect have to take to reach its destination? The ant will never reach the door because every time it'll travel only half the distance. Now, how about solving some rebus riddles? This is the first one for you. Hi, 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 hi. That's high five. The next one, noon good. What's this? That's how you greet people. Good afternoon. Okay, now try this one. Way progress. It's progress underway. Now let's check how attentive you are. Try to figure out what's wrong in the following images. There's no way anyone can wear those blue shoes. They're both left ones. How about this one? This horse looks rather natural among kangaroos, but it doesn't belong there. What's wrong in this picture? Why would a barn have a chimney? I suspect something is missing in this picture. Can you figure out what exactly? The bus doesn't have side mirrors and windshield wipers. Detective Lucas was called to investigate an accident. A car crashed into a store window and uh -oh. smashed the glass. There are two suspects. Both of them deny their involvement. Detective Lucas doesn't need much time to figure out who the culprit is. Do you know the answer too? It's the owner of the blue car. The pattern on its tires is the same as in front of the store. Detective Brown was having her morning coffee in a cafe when she heard a car screeching to a halt, then some loud shouting. She ran outside and spotted a man on the ground. His bicycle was lying nearby. There was also a car sitting next to the man. Detective Brown helped the cyclist up. The car driver came up to them. The cyclist exclaimed, He hit my bike with his car, making me crash! But the driver answered, I saw him losing control of his bike in the mirror. I left my car to check on him. Detective Brown immediately understood who was lying. Can you figure it out?
Strangely, the car doesn't have side mirrors, and all that stuff in the back seat blocks the view of the road, so the driver couldn't have seen anything in his rearview mirror either. He's lying. A man wearing a hat, a bandana covering his face, and dark sunglasses robbed a bank. The police have three suspects. Look at them and try to figure out which one is the criminal. Usually, people tie bandanas under their ears. But in this case, the bandana covers the robber's ears. It probably hides something that distinguishes the man from other people. The criminal must be that man with only one ear. When Louisa entered the office, she noticed that her colleague Anna was very upset. It was the beginning of the working day, but someone had already stolen her purse. Only those who worked in the company could get into the office. Louisa questioned her colleagues. Maria, who worked in IT, said she'd been fixing somebody's computer. Jane, the secretary, answered she'd been on the phone with some clients. Andrew, a sales manager, said, I've just returned from a three-hour long meeting. I'm exhausted. Can you figure out who took the purse? Andrew, the working day's just started. How could he come back from such a long meeting? That's it for today. So hey, if you pacified your curiosity, then give the video a like and share it with your friends. Or if you want more, just click on these videos and stay on the bright side. Detective Tina received an emergency call from the local museum. Someone had stolen an exclusive scarab brooch from ancient Egypt. First of all, Tina checked all security cameras. This is what she found. Can you spot the thief just by looking at these two pictures? See this guy? He's holding an open paper cup in the first image, but in the second image, the cup has a lid. The guy hid the stolen brooch in his paper cup. Detective Tina hurried to the crime scene. When the brooch disappeared, the museum security system locked all visitors inside the building. But the guards didn't find the suspected person among the visitors. How did he escape? Have you guessed? Take a look up at the ceiling. See the shoe prints on the statue? The thief climbed this sculpture and escaped through the window on the roof. Tina went to the roof to search for some clues. Can you see any? The thief left the cup on the roof. There's a coffee shop name written on it. Bright Cup. Tina can visit this place and check the security cameras. Tina arrived at the coffee shop, located just nearby the museum. Unfortunately, they didn't have security cameras, so Tina questioned the staff. Kelly, the barista, said, Sorry, I don't know this guy. I'm just trying to do my job. Mike, the manager, said, This face looks familiar, but I'm not sure where I saw him. And Phil, the guard, said, Sorry, never saw him. You can trust me. I have a perfect memory for faces. Tina knew for sure that one of them had lied. Can you spot who exactly? Kelly, look at her iPad. There's an incoming call from her boyfriend. Take a closer look at the contact photo. It's our thief. Therefore, Kelly is an accomplice in the crime. Tina told Kelly, I'm afraid we should continue this conversation at the police station. But Kelly ran away through the backyard. Tina followed her and ended up in a dark basement. She got lost and found these three cages. The first cage is covered with fire. There are huge ice cubes all over the second cage, and the third cage is full of venomous scorpions. Tina has to choose one of them to get to the surface. Can you help her choose the safest option? The cage with the ice cubes. She can get cold, but it's still safer than the other two cages. 
the police caught Kelly and brought her to the station. During interrogation, Kelly told Tina four facts. First of all, this guy's name is Alex. Secondly, he's my ex-boyfriend. We don't get along anymore. We went to the same college and met in history class. And finally, I don't know why he'd stolen this stupid brooch. One of the facts is false. Can you guess which one? The fourth one. Look at Kelly's tattoo. It's identical to the stolen brooch. She definitely knows something about the stolen item. Kelly confessed that the thief might be hiding in an abandoned castle site outside the city. Tina went to check it out. But anyone who wants to reach the castle should go through this tangled maze. Can you tell which one of these four paths will bring Tina to the castle? The first path leads to the pond with crocodiles. The third one leads nowhere. And the fourth way goes back to the beginning. So Tina should choose the second path. Tina entered the castle and saw a room full of ancient artifacts. She spotted the thief right away. What about you? Can you see him? This mummy is holding a cell phone. Alex ran away to the basement and Tina followed him. Unfortunately, the door behind her slammed shut and she got stuck. Can you help her break the code to escape? A calendar on the door says, you force heaven to be empty. If you read the sentence again, you're going to hear a seven-digit code. U, four, seven, two, B, M, T. In the next room, Tina got stuck in another trap. The creepy voice explained, If you press the right button, I'm going to let you go. But if you choose the wrong one, you'll stay here forever. You've only got one chance to escape. Good luck. Which button opens the lock? Have you guessed? She should pick the black button. This picture on the wall is a hint. The rainbow contains all colors except for black. Tina got out of the trap and entered a room full of old furniture. She noticed three odd details about this room right away. What about you? There are books in this burning fireplace, but they don't burn. Take a look at this painting on the wall. This lady's winking. And the reflection in this mirror doesn't match the room at all. Tina found Alex near these underground gates leading to an ancient underground city. He explained that the scarab brooch hid a secret key, but there are four different locks on the gates. The guys only have one attempt to choose the right one. Which lock should they pick? The fourth lock is the only perfect match for this key. The guys opened the gates and entered the city. Alex had a map, so he ran away to find the treasures and left Tina alone. She looked around and noticed a three-way road pointing to the north, west, and east. Tina didn't know where to go. Suddenly, she saw a lady. The local citizens always reply truthfully, but they answer only one question if they're talking to a stranger. What should Tina ask to figure out the right direction? She should ask, if the right direction is not the east, is it west? Here's why. There are three possible answers. One, yes, west is correct. Two, no, east is the right direction. Three, neither one nor the other. Tina should go north. Or, Tina might just ask the name of this lady and then introduce herself. This way, they won't be strangers anymore.
and Tina would be able to ask as many questions as she needed. Tina went north and finally found the entrance to a cave with treasures, but the door has a combination lock. Can you help Tina figure out the code? Take a look at these figures. The number corresponds to the sum of intersection points. Therefore, she needs to calculate the number of points in the last figure. And voila, the four-digit code is solved. Inside the caves, Tina met a dragon. It said, I'm gonna let you in if you can crack my riddle. I'm gonna let you in if you can crack my riddle. I'm quite hot, but if you remove the first two letters, I become too cold. What am I? Have you guessed? The correct answer is spice. When we take away the first two letters, it turns into ice. To find the treasures, Tina has to walk through this round maze. She only has 10 seconds to choose the correct way. Can you help her out? Here's the easiest way. Tina found three doors in the center of the labyrinth. Each door leads to treasures. But each way also hides some danger. The first path is filled with poisonous gas. There are thousands of toads and bugs behind the second door. They crawl all over the floor and walls. And a hungry lion is hiding behind the third door. Which way should Tina choose? The second way. Although bugs and toads can be gross, they're not dangerous. Tina took the treasures and headed home. Suddenly, she met Alex. Tina decided to trick him and offered him a deal. If you manage to solve my puzzle, I'm going to give you 100% of the treasures. But if you fail, you'll get nothing and go to jail. Here's the riddle. Move just one match to point this giraffe in a different direction. Alex failed to crack this riddle. What about you? Here's the correct answer. Pretty easy, huh? That's it for today. So hey, if you pacified your curiosity, then give the video a like and share it with your friends. Or if you want more, just click on these videos and stay on the bright side.